Okay, here is our update on the broader markets, July 26th. It is the day before the FOMC announcement. Everyone is expecting 75 bips. Maybe we get one full percentage point, I should say. Uh, maybe we get something less than 75 bips, and that's that's uh, you know interpreted as dovish. There's also the actual press conference at 2:30. Every now and then, there's like a big question that kind of throws things off, that you know shakes things up. So we'll start with the S&P 500. And you'll remember from my previous video, as always, that is a link to that is in the description. So please take a look at that. I mentioned that, right, like we were basically, you know, day 23 has now become a swing high. It was looking like it might become a swing high on that during that video. And so now that is a possible daily cycle top. I also mentioned in that video, it's important to note. I'm calling this our DCL at day 25, so that was June 17th. That was clearly our low, our pivot point. Like we we made a swing low, we consolidated here, and now we're trying to kind of break out here. This is your back test of that breakout theoretically. Now, this is where the cycle counts. Like it's important to like don't get too pedantic about the cycle, the actual cycle counts and focus on the price action. Let's say that this is not our daily cycle low and this is still like you know one long cycle so that would just mean that this is day 48 right just add the 23 to the 25 if we just continued counting so this is now day 49 day 50. previous cycle ended on day 54. we've had other cycles that went to day 43 days 42 48 so even if this has all just been one long cycle we're still coming pretty close to where we would expect the end so whether we're getting the end of this shorter cycle, so we had a 25 day cycle here and maybe we're getting a shorter cycle here, like 25 to 30 days. Well, not 25 days because, you know, yesterday, today was day 25. But you get my point that, you know, it, it kind of doesn't matter whether it's a long cycle that's going to be closer to 50 days or two shorter cycles that are each like 25 to 30 days. We're still probably getting into the timing band for our daily cycle low and obviously the FOMC announcement is going to be a big pivot point. Maybe we run higher and then we get our collapse or we just continue the downside momentum, which is, again, we created. So the swing high form today, just to be crystal clear, swing high is active below the low from this candle from day 23, which is 39.38.86. And so as long as we're below that, we are below the swing high. So that's your daily chart. Now on the weekly, this is where things get complex, but I think we're going to get some clarity um, starting tomorrow. I think we'll really see you know, how we trade Thursday because sometimes you'll get one reaction to close out the day of the Fed meeting and then you'll get the sort of big reversal the next day. So we still have to watch that. But we are potentially on week 22 of a weekly cycle. It's an inside week, as you can see, because we have that pullback. And I talked about this in my previous video because of the way we were closing. You know, we get if we get a pullback on the weekly to close out, that will give us the starting point of, a you know, an inside week. And now it's a question of do we break the downside? So we'll, the so the low from last week was thirty eight eighteen. So that's a level that you're going to want to watch. That's a hundred points lower from here. That's what you would see if we were going to make new lows, you know, down below the 36, 36 we had made earlier already. And by all accounts, this certainly has the appearance of a bear flag. We obviously made a lot more progress than this little failed rally and even this little failed rally. Like That's the way to look at these, right? We had this big downdraft. Actually, so we had this downdraft, then we had this failed rally, new low, this failed rally, new low, this failed rally, new low. Is this going to be a failed rally and then a new low? Now, I, I, that's my expectation. That's what I am preparing for. But a different price action signal, especially with the big FOMC catalyst tomorrow, would obviously change that. Because um, it's totally possible that week 16 was our ICL. It actually is still a swing low. So as long as we are above the high from that week, which was... 38 38 right so like that's your level right like we so that's going to be important that kind of coincides pretty closely with the low from last week so you can see 
that's how these things work. You sort of get a confluence of levels that are important that mean different things. Um, that are all that are all fairly significant and kind of triangulate to the same thing. And finally, the monthly chart. Super important to be aware of this. I've been saying this. I'll keep screaming it from the rooftops. We appear to be declining into our three-year cycle low. Three-year three-year cycle. Easy math. That's 36 months. It's month 28. It's just an inside green month so far. We're going to close out in a couple days. Imagine the Fed FOMC meeting announcement happens tomorrow. We get some pretty big downside. We could even see this candle go red, right, for the month. Like, it would be a, obviously a pretty big downdraft in, in the next couple days. But we open the month at 37.81. That's incredibly important to be aware of, right? If we can't close the month above 37.81... Then the green month that we have now with two days left before we close, or you know, a few days left before we close, could end green red and continue downside momentum to you know into August. So a lot of important cues to watch. And these same principles apply across the other um, you know, the other indices. So I'm not gonna go through those in incredible detail, but they're all the same kind of trajectory. They're, like the cues is a little different. It's the same trajectory for sure, but in, in the case of the Qs, we topped out much earlier. So we actually topped out on month 20 as opposed to month 22. So that was November. And again, we've been declining ever since. It's also month 28. Same kind of idea for the on the monthly chart. If we were to get like a real whoosh lower to, you know, below 3, 278, that's where we open, right? So that, that would be a huge drop, right? That'd be almost, you know, seven or eight percent in a couple in three days but that's not unheard of for the cues right you could have a two or three percent down day then another two or three percent down day maybe a one percent you know kind of consolidation even so whether we get that to close this month or not if we do see that continue with downside you know that'll just be more evidence that we're, we're dropping into that three-year cycle low which at this point i think there's you know ample evidence so for the cues on the daily chart same look as the s p um, we do have a daily swing high on the board in the case of the Qs, though that swing high was actually confirmed on monday so the high for this daily cycle happened on excuse me july 22nd the low for that candle is 300 dollars and 12 cents so once we slip below that level that 300 dollars level let's just call it that gave us our swing high and we're now kind of descending so you would expect at some point we probably get some kind of lower high, maybe like back up to here before we kind of continue the move lower. And this, is, and this is the daily chart. More significantly, let's look at how things stand on the weekly. I'm so similar to the S&P. We're probably going to get a daily cycle low pretty soon here. On the weekly, it's week 19. And it's the same picture as the S&P in that it's an inside week and it's red. The key level for... The Qs is, you know, the low from last week is 293.54. We're not super, um, you know, or excuse me, I'm sorry, it's 288.20. Um, so we're about seven, six, six, six or seven bucks away from that right now. That would tell you downside is really resuming. And again, same picture. I'm not going to belabor the point as the S&P. This could be, you know, um, sort of this could be resolving to be a failed rally just like this failed rally just like this little failed rally just like this little failed rally here um, interestingly enough we did close above the 10 period moving average you could draw a trend line here in terms of like knowing when a daily cycle low is in so so that you could there's a lot there's a lot to debate here this is super early for a weekly cycle low at week 13 um, so but but Again, the price action, <clears throat> the price action coming out of the FOMC meeting is going to tell us a lot. Like, is this a daily cycle, a weekly cycle that's about to continue for another few weeks to make another new low, or is this actually a new weekly cycle that just topped out early? That would actually be the much more bear bearish scenario. Um, so if you're, if you have reason to want to be bullish, that's probably that's the scenario you don't want to see. And for IWM, similar picture, not quite as weak as the Qs. You can see these last few days have actually just consolidated inside the range. Another way of saying that, just to be like crystal clear, 
we haven't broken below the low of the candle that marks the high, right? And so we don't actually have a swing high, not in the most traditional sense. Now, technically, this is actually a bearish outside bar. So we made a new high and a new low. So this itself is kind of sort of like a swing low. But because we're above the low from this candle, right, you can see these last two days, we just consolidated in here. Like, you're going to want to, we're going to need to break below that 178 level to really get um, things kind of started. Of course, this is some, this is a bit of a bull flag, but like this kind of looked like a bull flag at one point as well. And we all know how that ended. And on the weekly, it's week 22. Same count as the S&P inside week. Same kind of look to all of these because we had that pullback last week. So we have that upper wick on the weekly, which is which is what created the uh, the higher odds for uh, an inside week so far. Um, we'll see if we get, you know, we'll see if we resolve that. And for, the, for IWM, you know, a break below 172 or above essentially 170, 184, we'll call it 183.50. So a break above 183.50 means we're making new highs on the weekly. A break below 172 means we're starting to now make new lows and we're probably going to break below this low here at 165. So those are the levels to watch. And more importantly, I hope you're paying attention to the principles because these can apply to every, any asset class that trades anywhere um, as long as it has open, high, low, close, same kind of principle with candlesticks. Um, so that's the assessment for the broader markets. That 2 p.m. announcement is everything. The 2.30 uh, sort of press conference is going to give us even more context. And then we see how we close for the day. And then more importantly, I know it's like, well, after the number is released, it's like, okay, finally, we, we have our number. You have to wait and see the reaction to the reaction, right? Like if we rally, do we get follow through tomorrow or do we get early signs of a reversal? And that's an opportunity to get short or at least get out of the way. Or do we get a bit of a pullback and a rally back and then we see follow through or do we see a pull? Do we see, um, you know, a big, uh, you know, a big whoosh down and then that next day that gets bought up? There are a lot of different sort of permutations, if you will. But if you focus on the price action and the levels, understand where we are going into it. That's going to give you a, a big advantage.